with our partners brings you Transform Kenya Forums. These forums are set to bring the public and various experts together to share and offer solutions to our everyday problems. Join our panel as they discuss food security and nutrition in Kenya, live from the Strathmore Business School, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Follow the conversation on our social media platforms and help build an agriculturally viable and well-nourished future for our people. Transform Kenya. Empower our nation. Transform Kenya is brought to you by Standard Group in partnership with Cooper K Brands, Twiga Foods, Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries and Irrigation, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, and Strathmore Business School. Gentlemen, it's absolutely lovely to see you this evening tonight. Welcome to the third edition of Transform Kenya. This is an initiative by Standard Group that provides a platform, essentially, where Kenyans, stakeholders from different sectors, and leaders can all together engage on matters that are crucial to national development. Now, this is the third of this forum. The first one was held in Kwale, where we focused on matters to do with environment. The second one was held right here at the Strathmore Business School, where we dealt on issues to do with health. And tonight, we want to talk about food and nutrition security. This, of course, is one of the four big four agenda by Kenya's national government. And the reason why it's important to talk about this tonight, we may ask ourselves. Now, around 3.4 million Kenyans are severely food insecure, while 309,000 others have been internally displaced due to food insecurity and drought. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot overstate the importance of having this discussion. And before we delve right into it, and even before I welcome the panelists with whom we shall be engaging tonight, let me first of all thank and recognize our partners who have made this program possible tonight. I'd like to thank the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Let's give them a round of applause. I'd also like to thank Cooper Brands Limited, the Ministry of Li Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Irrigation. I'd also like to thank Twiga Foods Limited and of course our gracious host yet again tonight where we are roofed as we have this uh, engagement tonight, that is the Strathmore Business School. Thank you uh, very much to our partners. <laughs> And I'm not steering this ship alone tonight. I am joined by my colleagues, Michael Gitonga and Yusuf Ibrahim. Hello, guys. Hello, Sharon. Thank you very much. And you look lovely, by the way. And thank you for that beautiful introduction. I'm trying to figure out what you've left out. But allow me to reiterate what you've already said, that our topic of discussion tonight is food security and nutrition. Food security, as I've already mentioned, is one of the big four agendas of President Uhuru Kenyatta and by extension his Jubilee administration. We're going to have the principal secretary, agriculture and livestock, is going to be among the panelists. Perhaps he's going to tell us how he's planning to execute that. But that's a debate for another time. But allow me to share some grieving statistics with our live viewers here. And of course, our viewers who are watching KTN at home. The Food and Agriculture Organization that is FAO, we're going to have a representative from FAO, by the way, the panelist, uh, shortly. They've released a statistics, a very grimming statistics, indicating that about 841 million people across the world go hungry every single day. And most of these people, I mean, you can finish the sentence, are from sub-Saharan Africa. Kenya alone is home to about 400,000 malnourished children. I mean, these are very shocking statistics, and I'm sure these are some of the things that you're going to discuss with your panelists. But 
to our live audience here, if you have something that is a burning issue, you know, a question whatsoever, just talk to me and you're going to shoot the question right to the panelists. And of course, those who are watching us at home, you can choose to engage us on our social media platform. Our Twitter handle is at KTN Kenya. You can as well share your messages on Facebook. And my colleague on the other end, Mark, Mike Gitonga, I'm sure is going to go through some of the feedback, right? Yes, thank you. And uh, the hashtag that we're running this evening is Transform Kenya. Hashtag Transform Kenya S G. So let's get this conversation out of the boardrooms and where it matters, where the work is done. Now, in Kenya, the diversity between food supply and the demand continues to grow. A new institution that is looking at food security has given figures of 75% of what the growth is needed for us to have enough food supply by uh, 2030, and that is huge. Now, Kenya is eighth in Africa in terms of its agricultural sector, and this is by no means small, but the diversity continues to grow. Where is the problem? Well, we have two things that come into play. Number one is a rapid increase in population. Number two is poor farming methods. We could look at technology uptake that is very slow, uh, poor seed supply, uh, poor uh, farm implements, and these are some of the subjects that we're going to be looking at right here. Remember, this conversation is not just restricted to us here. You at home are welcome to have this conversation as we continue, and the hashtag again is Transform Kenya SG. Let us empower our nation. And let's begin this conversation, Sharon. Right, absolutely. Let's get right into it. Just to remind you, we shall be looking at thematic areas uh, within the subject of food security and nutrition security as well. We shall be looking at matters to do with food production, access to markets, consumer and farmer awareness, as well as post-harvest uh, handling of food. And before we look, uh, we delve right into this uh, discussion. Let me now at this juncture welcome our panelists to join me right here on the podium. I shall be introducing them to you as they walk to join us so that we are familiar with who they are. I will begin by Professor Hamadi Idi Boga. Professor Hamadi is the principal. Let's give him a round of applause as he walks to join us on the stage. Professor Hamadi is the Principal Secretary at the State Department of Agricultural Research. He has interest in the microbial ecology of insect guts, soils, and soda lakes. He has worked with termites, the soda lakes of Kenya, mangrove swamps, agricultural and forest soils, and also on Mount Kenya Glacier. On the academic front, Professor Hamadi has played a key role in the establishment and growth of the Taita Taveta University as its founding principal and later vice chancellor. Karibu sana. as we have that technical situation being sorted. I'd like also to welcome on stage Kikonde Mwatela. Kikonde, let's give him a round of applause as he comes on stage, is the Chief Operating Officer at Twiga Foods Kenya. Kikonde Motela has built and led teams in sourcing in difficult terrain across Kenya, farmer negotiations, as well as building structures and process flows with agility and flexibility. He uh, really connects farmers to markets. Uh, he's our marketing uh, face when we're talking about agriculture and access to markets. Uh, Kikonde Motela will be giving us his experience uh, as a CEO of Twiga Foods Kenya Limited. We also have joining us on the panel Dr. Gabriel Rugalema. Dr. Gabriel Rugalema is the current uh, representative in Kenya from the Food and Agriculture Organization. I don't see him. I, uh, oh, yes. Karibu sana, Dr. Gabriel. He is a FAO representative of Kenya, and uh, he obtained his Bachelor of Science in Agriculture at Sokoina University and of Agriculture in Tanzania. Many thanks for joining us on the panel tonight, sir. Right, uh, we also have joining us Professor Margaret Hutchinson. Professor Margaret Chesang Hutchinson is a horticulturalist and senior lecturer at the University of Nairobi. 
She has more than 30 years of experience in the agriculture sector and of course brings to this discussion vast experience and the field of academics in agriculture and research, looking at the nexus between research and the practice of agriculture in the country. Karibu sana, Professor. We also have, joining us later, she's making her way here, Professor Mary Abukutsa, and of agrobiodiversity, professor of horticulture at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. If you were with us uh, when we were launching our Farm Kenya initiative, uh, you saw the vast kind of experience she brought and with a passion really of having youth uh, joining us, uh, joining rather the sector of agriculture. Right, so... Uh, I think lastly but not least, uh, we have Okisegere Ojapat, who is the founder and CEO of Tamlega Farm Care Limited. Uh, Okisegere Ojapat is also a director of Fresh Produce Exporters Association of Kenya, FPEAK, and he's a passionate agronomist who has served in various capacities in the NGO world. Karibu sana. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a, lamp, a round of applause. So we shall be getting into this conversation in just a bit. And before we do that, let's just take a look at this video clip that will be setting the tone of our discussion tonight. Transform Kenya. Empower our nation. Since independence, we as a people have sought to ensure that our citizens enjoy food security and proper nutrition. And while we have made good progress, the challenge, however, remains yet to be fully conquered. It is time to address once and for all the multiple and interlocking fac factors that leave too many Kenyans at risk of hunger. Kenya's economy is 70% agricultural based, with the sector being the largest employer in the country. For this reason, the agricultural sector accounts for nearly 25% to the country's gross domestic product, and yet it suffers from mismanagement and poor resource planning. President Uhuru Kenyatta's administration has prioritized agriculture as one of the key pillars in the Big Four agenda, which looks to improve the food situation in the country. Food security, affordable housing, manufacturing, and affordable health care for all. During the next five years, I will dedicate the energy, time, and resources of my administration to these big four. Led by our president, Uhuru Kenyatta, will now involve all of us. Nobody should be left behind. With limited resources, Kenya ranks low in its budgetary allocations to agriculture. The National Treasury has allocated 20.25 billion shillings to enhance food and nutrition security to all Kenyans by 2022 and 2.4 billion shillings to support value addition and raise the manufacturing sector's share to gross domestic product to 15% by 2022. In Kenya, food consumption is outpacing food production. We will mobilize farmers across the country to do a major demonstration. That is in Kitale, in Eldoret, we will close all the towns where uh, the maize issues uh, has been, uh, where most farmers have been uh, affected. I think this is going to be very serious. And I also do, I want to repeat again that I want the president himself his Excellency Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta to address this issue because it is going out of hand and it might not come out very well. According to a new Institute for Security Studies report, annual agricultural production will need to increase by an estimated 75% from 2015 levels in order to meet consumption in 2030. Among factors that have hampered food production include climate change as well as farming practices. For instance, beginning 2008, the country has been facing severe food insecurity problems, a high proportion of the population having no access to food in the right amounts and quality.
naona Kenya imefikia mahali pagumu Uh, the problems you're experiencing uh, in Kenya, I think, is exactly what we're experiencing in South Africa. Uh, the government is borrowing money, a lot of money off the Chinese. There's no transparency. Uh, we, we've no idea of, of what the, even what the interest rate is supposed to be. Um, it's, it's rather, rather scary. Prices are going up. Uh, and of course, it, it's not affecting the politicians. Official estimates indicate that over 10 million people are food insecure, with majority of them living on food relief. Households are also incurring huge food bills due to the high food prices. Maize being a staple food due to the food preferences is in short supply, and most households have limited choices of other foodstuffs. We will bring targeted taxation to bear to put idle arable land to use. We will continue to encourage and facilitate large-scale commercial agriculture to diversify our staples through irrigation and other technologies. We will protect our water towers. Small-scale farmers will receive better extension services and market access, and subsidies will be redesigned to improve food yields and production quality. With the private sector, we will deal with the challenges of distribution, waste, storage and value addition that have so long hampered our production. For Kenya to attain food security, the government must explore partnering in the private sector to ensure the sector is better administered by allocating at least 15% of the national budget to agriculture. Other proposals that could see Kenya improve her food situation is diversification from her staple foods to other crops. Abi Agina, KTN News, Food Transform Kenya. Transform Kenya, empower our nation. All right, and of course, that uh, story by our business editor uh, just sets the tone for the, for the tone rather for the conversation that we shall be having tonight. But at this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, allow me uh, to invite our CEO, Mr. Orlando Liomu, who will just give us a few remarks and welcome us even as we start this forum tonight. Karibu sana, Mr. Orlando. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Um, <clears throat> good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and to our panelists and other distinguished guests, Karibuni Sana. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be called to say a few remarks when you have these Transform Kenya initiatives. But I think today's makes more sense to me, it's more relevant because the topic of discussion is very closely tied to an initiative that we launched um, about a month ago and which we feel is very critical to the discussions that we are going to be having today. So, distinguished guests, panelists, partners, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this evening of the Transform Kenya Forum, which is part of a series of public debates on important national issues that we have been hosting under this banner since June this year. We are delighted as the Standard Group to see many of you here this evening, which is a demonstration of the seriousness with which Kenyans take the question of national food security, which is the theme of our discussion today. We all know that Kenya faces severe food shortages and access to water is a major challenge, which has a serious knock-on effect on the level of nutrition in the country. Yet, we are endowed with some of the best land for agriculture and water masses for fishing, and we happen to enjoy a diverse climate that makes it possible to grow a wide variety of crops and rare livestock. The Standard Group believes in forging long-term partnerships that, we believe, will play a critical role in transforming Kenya into a prosperous society that empowers all citizens. And it is for this reason that we bring you this Transform Kenya Forum in partnership 
with the following organizations. Cooper Brands Limited, Quigga Foods, the Ministry of Agriculture, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, and of course our host this evening, the Strathmore Business School. I would like to thank our partners for being a key pillar in this initiative, whose goal is to encourage Kenyans to be part of the solution to the country's challenges by participating in these open forums that we televise live on the KTN News. The public can also participate in the conversation through the standard social media platforms, as well as on Radio Maisha and the standard newspaper. You've seen for yourself. We have some of the best brains in the world whose agricultural expertise we export to the rest of Africa. Surely, with such kind of expertise, we can tackle the food security crisis. I hope that this forum and others that we will, we will hold under our new Farm Kenya initiative will give us impetus to take the actions required to achieve national food security as envisioned by the president in his big four agenda. Now, if you allow me to just pause there, maybe some people might wonder, what is the Farm Kenya Initiative? Farm Kenya Initiative is an initiative of the Standard Group PLC that we launched on the 20th of September. And basically, the question we were trying to answer is, as a media house, how do we play our role in ensuring that the country achieves food security, achieves sustainable farming practices? Of course, naturally one would expect that we have to be either an agricultural-based institution to contribute towards that, or somebody expects that we must be a governmental organization to achieve that. But we sat down and realized that today we have a lot of information that resides in different quarters. We have a lot of research that has been done in different institutions. We have a lot of good ideas that are residing in people's private spaces. Any good idea that is hidden in a corner dies. And therein lies the opportunity for us. We feel that the Farm Kenya Initiative is going to provide a platform for all this information, for all this research, for all the ideas to reach every corner of this country. We want to use Farm Kenya Initiative to drive advocacy. We want to drive sharing of ideas on sustainable practices. We want to drive the ability of farmers to receive the right information when they need it. And with Farm Kenya Initiative, we believe that once we put all our platforms at the disposal of this initiative, that means TV, print, digital, revenue. And this is not just rhetoric because as we speak, we've already launched our 24-hour farming TV station. It's currently under test for those who have any of the set of boxes, start times, go TV, just go look, you'll see KTN Farmers TV. We want to dedicate a radio station to this initiative. We've already set up digital assets that are supposed to help us drive this initiative. And we believe that with the partnership of the people who are in this room and others who are not in this room, we shall be able to start shaping the agenda of food security, agribusiness, and nutrition in this country. And that's what Farm Kenya Initiative is all about. So I wish to thank all distinguished panelists who represent the national government, the county governments, the United Nations, private food processors, and academia for agreeing, for agreeing to share their wealth of knowledge and experience with us. I would like to call all of us to join in this conversation and help build a better Kenya. Thank you, and have a wonderful Transform Kenya evening. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Orlando, our CEO. I'd like to start our discussion with uh, a definition here that the Kenya Food Security Steering Group of 2008, what they defined uh, food security to be. And they defined it as a situation in which all people at all times 
have physical, social, and economic access and economic access to sufficient, safe, and nutritious food, which meets their dietary needs, and food preferences for an active and healthy life. So when we're talking about more than 4 million Kenyans being food insecure, and tying it to this definition, we are talking to Kenyans who have lack of access, physically, socially, um, even economically, to food either at all, or those that meet their dietary preferences. And I think that is a good place to start our conversation uh, tonight. And I would like to start uh, with our representative from FAO, just to give us a picture. Why do we stand at this state uh, as a country? Four million people unable to access food. Where are the gaps? Uh, thank you, Sharon. Um, and uh, thank you, uh, Standard uh, Media Group, for uh, this um, forum. I think it's really very, very um, interesting and, uh, and very timely because the issues of food security and nutrition are not only survival issues. We all want to eat and we need to survive. They are also about dignity issues. If you are uh, not well fed, if you are poor, you don't really have that dignity. And there are also national security issues too. I mean, a very um, hungry nation is a very angry nation. So I want to say a few things. That first of all, I mean, we have a problem of food insecurity in Kenya. But if you look at the uh, bigger scheme of things, Kenya has made progress. Uh, if you look, for example, the two droughts I can compare, 2011 and 2016. 2011, we had more casualties we had bigger problems. 2016, which was worse than 2011, we didn't have uh, casualties and we were able to distribute the food that we need. So I think we have to agree first that progress has been made. It has been slow. There are uh, some of the challenges that we will address tonight. But uh, let us not be overly negative. Some progress is being made. That's one. Two. I think um, um, we need, um, I mean, the, the, the theme of tonight is transform Kenya in terms of food and, and, and food security. So to transform, I see the transformation at three levels. First, there is transformation of mindset. For many, many years, agriculture has been seen as an occupation of the poor. Many um, uh, poor farmers ache out a living on very, very small plots. Um, the young people don't want to go to agriculture because they don't see it as, as, as a promising um, occupation. So we need also to change that mindset. The researchers do good research, but it stays in the research stations. We need to change that mindset. The politicians make budgets, but actually they don't give money to agriculture. We need to change that mindset. The second way then is to change the way of, uh, of doing things, because it's not only about the mindset. To transform, you also need to change the way you do things. And to do things, that means let us bring technology into agriculture. Let us use water for increased agricultural production and, 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 and productivity. If you look at Kenya today, I think irrigation is just about um, uh, 10 or 15 percent. Um, but we get all this rain that gets spoiled. I always tell people, uh, farmers and crops and livestock don't need rain. They need water. If you have water and you can irrigate, you will be assured of food security. So we need to change the way of doing things. The, um, the, the banks, I mean, farmers need credit. The banks don't understand farmers. The farmers don't understand banks. So the credit doesn't filter out. We need to change that too and a few, uh, a few other things. Then we can change the outcome. First, we change the mindset, and we change the way of doing things. Which, uh, then we can change the outcome. We can increase food security in Kenya. Let me end up by, by saying that. The, let me start with, um, uh, with an example. We are working with uh, about 40,000 youth in Kenya. Um, and uh, our approach in FAO is to identify the young people, to train them, connect them, or link them to service providers, uh, then uh, link them to the market 
uh, and we are working with the Twiga Foods in, the, in, in, in this case. Uh, and I have seen young people who never thought of going into agriculture. As soon as markets opened up, they went into agriculture. I think uh, my colleague from Twiga Foods will be talking about that. And that's what I'm saying. We can change the mindset. We need to change the way of doing things. And the things will come together. In a country of 50 million people, uh, about, um, I don't know where you got your numbers, but uh, according to our numbers, the people who are food insecure in Kenya, about 2 million in a normal year. Uh, last year, because of drought, it went up to 3.4 million. Right. Uh, it didn't reach 4 million. So 2 million is, um, is not a big problem that we can't deal with, given that we have the resources, we produce probably enough food in the country to, to deal with this. And we also have social protection measures in Kenya, the hunger safety net and many others. So I don't see that we have a big, big problem if we really put our, 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 our will to do it. Kenya can become food secure in a number of years. Not 10, not 15, but five, six. Right. And, and I want to bring in Professor Hutchinson uh, at that point that uh, uh, do you agree that we really are not in a point of a crisis? Are we transforming agriculture in the country as we know it? Yeah, thank you very much, Sharon, and thank you, Strat Group, for inviting us tonight for this very important discussion. Uh, in addition to what my colleague has mentioned, um, I think um, in terms of progress. I could also agree that we have made some progress. We could have done it better and faster. There are still some serious gaps, like if you look at the statistics on poverty, which is a driver for food insecurity, you realize that over 50% of Kenyans are still poor. So in terms of economic access, that is still a challenge to quite a large population of our people. If you also look at the issue of who is actually on the farm, we have what we call feminization of agriculture, where the women do most of the works. And so in terms of even the technology transfers that we are trying to do, either from the research institutions or from the academia, have been silent in terms of being gender responsive. In terms of uh, motivating the youth, I think we can do much more. So I, in my, from where I sit, um, I see that we could have achieved this food security yesterday. So even uh, the, our new constitution tells us in the Article 43.1c that every citizen has a right to access food, sufficient food, preferably what you, what you prefer to eat. And so uh, where I sit is that actually we should have a zero tolerance to food insecurity and no Kenyan deserves to go to bed, even if it is two million people, that is too high for me. And so with all the knowledge that we have, with all the technologies that we have, with all the political goodwill, even being on the fourth agenda, I actually submit to you that if we can deal with food security, I think we can even have our health budget. And so what are we not doing right? If we have the wealth of information and the technologies and what you have mentioned, then what, what remains to achieve this food security dream? Um, thank you, Cheryl. I think uh, there are a myriad of issues. I think if we were look, to look at the value chain approach to food security or even the production of food, you realize that we have a lot of issues around inputs. So issues of even access to land is still an issue. Our land has been fragmented so much that they have actually become unproductive pieces. Issues of access to clean planting material. Uh, production packages, the, some of the technologies are very sophisticated, but are they available to the small-scale farmers? When it comes to um, access to markets, that for me is the big question in the, in the house. Are we accessing markets? I know there's a lot of improvement in infrastructure, but I also have issues with uh, post-harvest losses, which can be very high. Dep even for the horticultural crops, you're dealing with between 30, sometimes the statistics are over 50%. And so what we are not doing is also documenting, and that's where the, the academia like us and the researchers can come in to actually ensure that our policy is driven by evidence, that we have sufficient data to actually drive the process. So we are not doing very well in terms of even implementing policy itself. We have beautiful papers. Other countries in our region have run.
play with it. And so in terms of implementing the policies that we have actually passed could be one of the areas that we can strengthen. But in terms of progress, I would actually say, yes, we've made some progress, but we can do much more. Right. And you talk about uh, access to markets being one of the biggest uh, problems we have uh, in agriculture and food production in the country. And truly, if you speak to many people who, uh, you know, small scale farmers, uh, really this is an issue that is shared. It's a shared story uh, for many of them. And Kikonde, this is your sector. You work with farmers trying to uh, connect them to markets. Um, are we seeing, what are the barriers? What's between the farmers and markets? And what kind of solutions could we be looking at even as we speak about transforming Kenya? Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Stanley Media Group as well, for uh, giving us this opportunity uh, to share our ideas. Um, and thank you for the panel. Uh, it's a great panel. Um, I, think, uh, I think you have to look at it as market access is actually the biggest risk yeah. in food production. Um, yeah. There's a, a famous um, philosopher who I quite like who called Nassim Taleb, who talks about uh, a thought, uh, an analogy, where you play Russian roulette. You put a, a gun to your head, and you have one bullet out of six. And if you pull the trigger, you get you know, what would be theoretically a billion shillings, right? And uh, he says, would you pull the trigger? Mm -hmm. And he says, if you, if you ask a financial advisor, they'll tell you 85% chance of being a billionaire, pull the trigger. But if you ask your mother, <laughs> she'll tell you, <laughs> she'll tell you there's a 15% chance of you ending up in a cemetery. So maybe you shouldn't. And I think the thing is, uh, good businesses run with the good sense of your mother. Right, that uh, you should do things that do not expose you to ruin. Uh, but if you look at our, our informal sector, uh, what you have on one hand is a deeply fragmented um, you know, demand side. So you have a lot of what we call mamambogas. Um, and this is 96% of all the fresh produce traded in, in Nairobi, for example, is traded through mamamboga and there's about roughly 105,000 of them in Nairobi. And they play a critical role in distributing food. Um, but when you look at the, on the farm side, you have, you know, I, I think it's millions of farmers, uh, smallholder farmers. I think potatoes is something like 800,000 farmers. Mm -hmm. The problem is that for a lot of these farmers, they cannot plant without a very clear idea about what the purchasing order is. So any business needs a purchase order. How much quantity, what are the quality, quality requirements, what are the prices? And because there are so many mamambogas, it's impossible to actually have a coherent way of understanding what the demand side looks like. So it's a little bit like putting a gun to your head. You're not sure whether you will be successful. So what Twiga has done is aggregate the demand of all these vendors using a technology platform allowing the vendors to then communicate their aggregate demand to a very specific extent, to the extent of even up to, I want this banana, but I want this variety, this SKU, so you know, what, whatever category it is, and in these quantities, and this is the price that would be acceptable to me. By creating that certainty, what you see then is farmers can plan. Mm. And what we've seen with a lot of our farmers, we have about uh, about 14,000 farmers now on our platform across 20 counties in Kenya is many of them beginning to actually get into, uh, into a system of planning for production. I think if we continue on that, on that route, then all these other things come into play. So when you think about things like inputs, when you think about credit facilities, finance. Um, I had a conversation with a, a leading uh, manager of a great insurance business. I asked him, would, would you give uh, farmers crop insurance? He gave me a flat no. And uh, the reason is, is, is obvious. It's if trying to be in, a, in, a, in an agricultural space and, and offering crop insurance to farmers who can be exposed to ruin is not a good business. Mm -hmm. But if you create certainty, then obviously now it becomes investable. And those sorts of products can automatically start to generate. So I think food security is really tied to that, that, that problem of market risk. And how do we do that, creating certainty and, and helping farmers to be able to have that kind of solid, uh, you know, outlook on, on this? So I think the, we've done, well, we've tried to do the first part, which is to aggregate demand uh, and create proper price signals for farmers to, to utilize. 
I think it's scaling that and making sure that that becomes the norm. Uh, farmers can actually go on the platform, book their product. We have farmers now booking their product up to three months in advance, mm -hmm. which is progress because most farmers uh, start looking for market one week before their product is ready. Mm -hmm. And now you have farmers telling us, you know, three months down the line, I've planted X, I've planted X number of acres and, and we should be able to, should be able to sell. So I think that's, that's really the, the path to go on is to focus on um, creating that certainty um, as private sector. I think this is an area that uh, private business um, should function in um, because I don't think uh, the public sector is, 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 the, is the place to actually, you know, make this challenge known. I think the public sector has its role, but I think the private sector's role here is to, to be entrepreneurial, go out, innovate around technology, leverage on that technology to make sure that you can create that certainty. Mm -hmm. Right, and Bwana uh, Pierce, in the big, on the Big Four agenda, the government has made an ambitious commitment to achieve 100% food and nutrition security. Talk to us about how exactly, the how we see this being achieved. Uh, thank you, Sharon. And uh, just like my colleagues have said, that we, the, we have made progress as a country. There are food deficits they are not very big and the production has been growing although there are challenges because of issues of drought issues of climate so it always varies depending on the year and i think in terms of the plans that we have for making sure that we increase productivity we are looking at the factors that limit productivity every year tegemeo institute sort of does a, an analysis that informs our plans in the ministry. And uh, what we plan to do going forward is to do the yield analysis every year and then do the yield gap analysis. The yield analysis is the prevailing situation and the yield gap is what it could be. And uh, when you do the yield gap and you locate the place where production is going on, you can actually know the parameters that are hampering production. Mm -hmm. So we want our farmers, we want our counties to be guided by evidence, to be guided by science as they undertake the production enterprise. I think the yield gap in Africa is a knowledge gap. And I think if we can fix the knowledge and crop management gap, I think we will have dealt with most, most of the problem. The other problem with Africa, and also Kenya in particular, and we have to get past that by changing our mindsets, is the problem of the seeds, the seeds we, we use. Whether you are talking about livestock, you are talking about fish, or you are talking about crops, mm -hmm. you need the seed material and uh, the type of seed will determine the kind of yields you'll get. Right. I'll give you an example. I went to Kiambu County to visit maize farmers. Now, Kiambu is a very educated place, and they have been growing maize for a long time. But when you go there, when we went there, what we realized, they were growing a variety of maize, 614, which is meant for Kitale. 614 requires 150 days of rain. Gatundu has about 90 days of rain. So by the time the rain is over, the maize is still struggling to go up. Mm -hmm. So what you will get out of your acre, you will get half a bag when you should have been getting 25 bags. So this is a knowledge issue, and I think the government is up to it. And I think all, what we need to do is fix our extension system, which sort of uh, is struggling, because as we adapt to devolution, but I think we have put in place a mechanism where we are discussing with governors. We have established a secretariat called JASCOM so that we can capacity build ourselves and the, and the extension workers so that the farmer can have access to technology and can have access to knowledge and we will be able to address this yield gap. 
do we have a picture of, of what that association with the counties would be? Noting that there was, and you rightly say, before devolution perhaps disrupted this, um, yeah. you know, dissemination of extension services. Yeah. Be because before that, there was the economic uh, stimulus programs and all of that that yeah. really uh, boosted growth and, uh, you know, farmer and consumer awareness. So could you talk to us a bit more about the picture of this kind of partnership you're looking the, at? The, the picture is this. We, uh, at the beginning, you remember when devolution started, there was a lot of uh, back and forth between the county and the national government. Mm -hmm. That is gone now. We have settled. People are talking. People realize that we have to work together. In the Ministry of Agriculture, we have established JASCOM, which is a joint agricultural secretariat to manage issues and discuss issues because we all want the same thing. Mm -hmm. And there has been a lot of cooperation. At the higher level, there is a committee for agriculture in the Council of Governors. We are interacting a lot with that. And uh, all the programs of the government and also our donor partners, mm -hmm. whenever they fund programs, they fund knowing that there is devolution mm -hmm. and we are working together. And I think what needs uh, to happen under some of the programs we have identified for each region value chains. Not all of us have to grow maize. Mm -hmm. Some things grow better in some places than others. In the past, people were just growing what everybody else was growing. But uh, under some of the programs that we have been supported, together with our donor partners, is to map the country and do crop suitability maps so that we can tell counties, please don't grow maize there. It's a waste of time. Like, for example, in the coast region, they want to grow maize like everybody else. The soils are sandy. Mm -hmm. They are for horticulture. But we have to get that to the farmer and, and, and make them understand that if you, 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 if you want a bag of maize for the year for your family, it will cost you maybe 2,000 shillings, and you can get that by selling fish. Mm. So you don't have to grow the maize and waste all your energy. So there is a lot of conversation that we need to have with our farmers, and uh, it has to be done intensively uh, so that we can change, because sometimes it takes a, a while to change a culture. And I think part of what we are struggling with is culture. Mm -hmm. We need to change. Uh, and uh, there are some counties which shouldn't be growing maize. They should be growing cotton mm. uh, because we also want to develop our textile industry. They can buy the food by selling cotton. But you see, they spend a lot of time in uh, dry areas trying to grow maize when there is no water, mm -hmm. and even without taking the element of water harvesting. So what we are trying to do and what we have put in place in our plans and in our documents, ourselves and our partners, is to make sure that we address this knowledge gap by strengthening the extension system and our interactions with counties right. so that the production can happen. Because right. in Kilimo House, we just have policy, we have research, a very good research capacity, by the way, most of the of the hybrids of maize you see being grown around is mainly developed by CALRO mm -hmm. to the extent that we are even supporting what is grown in other countries in the region and we have the capacity to even export technology. We don't have to just export maize. Mm -hmm. And uh, the State Department of Agriculture Research is also trying to focus our researchers to look at the continent. The inter-Africa trade is an opportunity so that our farmers know the market is not just in Kenya, the market is in Africa, and we are being measured on how much trade we are doing. Right. If other